an object. And once the virus enters our bodies, um, it kind of multiplies, proliferates in the uh, person's throat mainly, nose and throat. And so one of the main symptoms of the infection is cough. And when the infected person coughs, small droplets of fluid, so small droplets of saliva and mucus in the throat are released in the air. And these droplets contain a lot of viruses. And so as um, the picture on the kind of uh, top right hand um, shows, if people are sitting together, then the virus from cough droplets from the infected person can easily go into um, uh, other persons, it can land on other people uh, who can breathe it directly and then it will uh, infect their throats. Or if the person covers the mouth while coughing, they are going to, the, the virus will spread to their hands. Now, if people shake hands, that is a good way of transferring the virus to other person's hands. And of course, the other thing we do all the time is we always handle various things with our hands. So mobile phones are almost body organs like two hands. All of us have two hands and a mobile. And so if a person is coughing, the virus will very easily go on the mobile phone. Door knobs, if we leave the room, go somewhere, we are going to handle the door knob or door handle. And as the picture um, at the bottom on the right hand column shows, uh, buttons of the elevator in the home um, uh, environment, buttons on our microwave and so many things. And so the virus will be viable on all these um, objects um, for some time. And then if somebody else touches the door knobs or microwave buttons or your mobile, the virus will transfer onto their hands. And then of course, we all have the habit of touching our face many times when the virus will quite neatly get near nose or mouth and infect other people. This is one of the most infectious viruses in the sense they say that it each person can infect about two to three other people. And that's why it spreads in that proportion. So one person will infect three and then nine and 27 and so on. And that's why it has spread so rapidly around. Uh, can I have the next slide, please? Thank you. So how can we prevent getting infected? Now we know that a lot of people around us have the virus. They are either carriers of virus or they are suffering from the infection. And so if we go to crowded places, supermarkets, workplaces, there is a chance that somebody is actually releasing the virus in the um, surroundings. So one way we can avoid getting the infection is being about six feet or two meter away from other people. And what this will avoid is getting the, uh, when the, uh, the, the infected person coughs, Usually, the droplets from their cough will not travel further than six feet or two meter. And so if we maintain that distance from every other human being, that will avoid getting virus directly into, the, um, in, into our breath from those people. And that will, of course, also avoid virus uh, falling onto our hands, etc. Can you press the thing, please? Yeah, yeah. So thank you. Not shaking hands, another important thing. So we say namaste, we stop shaking hands altogether. And next one, please. Hand washing, very important because social distancing and not shaking the hands, we will avoid getting it onto us. But then of course, the infected person may have infected other objects which we may touch. So whenever we come home, wherever we have gone out after coming home, washing hands thoroughly, washing hands up to elbows really if uh, they were exposed. Um, repeated hand washing is very important in controlling this infection. You can have the next one, please. Thank you. 
if we are coughing, if we have got cough or cold, then use tissues, catch it in the tissue, bin the tissue, and then wash your hands. And so that will prevent us spreading infection to other people. Can I have the next one, please? Thank you. And so if in spite of this, we do get an infection, how do we know? And so what are the symptoms of COVID-19? And so COVID-19 is like a really bad flu. Now, many people actually, many people have not experienced flu. And I experienced swine flu in 2009 and I was absolutely shocked. I thought that was the worst disease I ever had. And that's because we are not used to having flus. We get common cold and bit of cough all the time. But flu is different and COVID is even worse than flu in many cases. So um, common symptoms are fever, rigors, chills, uh, dry cough, uh, sore throat, body ache. And so a lot of people have told me that they feel as if somebody has absolutely bashed them. Um, headaches, so quite bad headaches as well. People don't feel hungry. They are too tired to eat as well. So they, many times they lose the sense of taste and smell. Uh, any infection makes you lose your appetite and the tiredness is so extreme that people just want to sleep. And again, some people have told me that they have been sleeping for 14 hours, 16 hours of the day uh, when they were very ill. Oh, sorry. So uh, most of the people will get these symptoms for about five, six days, and then they will start getting better gradually. But some people, so five to 10%, can actually get worse around day eight to 12. And they get worse by actually having a breathing problem. So if any one of us gets these bad flu-like symptoms, then what we really need to watch very carefully is breathing. Now, the public health guidance also says that if we get these symptoms, we should be in one room. We should isolate ourselves as much as possible, even from our family members. And so when you are in one room, you are not doing anything. You are ill and tired. So all you are doing is getting out of bed to use the toilet. It can be difficult to notice breathlessness. And so I think one activity which most of the people will be doing during this illness is having a shower. And so if anyone is feeling breathless after taking a shower, then they need to watch their breathing carefully. If it gets worse, then you need to call doctors. Now the suggested route is 111. And I have heard people say that 111, I mean 111 are, there is no doubt that they are inundated with all the calls and their response times are not very good. Most of the GPs are advising, most of the GPs are doing, um, uh, they're not doing many face-to-face -face clinics, but they are doing uh, remote clinics um, via video calls. And of course, if, Someone's getting really breathless, getting really worried, not getting response in time from either 111 or from their GP or emergency GP, then come to emergency department. Most of the emergency departments in the country are not very busy these days. And so if anyone goes to uh, emergency department, they will be seen very quickly. Can I have the next slide, please? Thank you. Okay, so, you know, just going to talk about treatment, but before that, talking about symptoms of COVID, it's also important to remember that a lot of people will probably get COVID without even knowing that they had it. And most of the people, you know, the, all of us, we have no doubt that it happens. A lot of people, especially youngsters, will get the infection without getting any symptoms. What we don't know is, the percentage of these people. And so at the moment in the country, we think that uh, about three, three to 4% people have had symptomatic infections, but we don't know how many people had 
infections without symptoms. So now I talk about treatment. So there is no proven antiviral drug or antibiotic that works for this virus. Antibiotics don't work for viruses. So of course, antibiotic, none of the antibiotics will work for any virus. So the main uh, mainstay of treatment is really taking something to help your symptoms. Now, paracetamol is a wonderful drug. It helps, uh, it controls the temperature. So if somebody is getting high fever, uh, rigors, paracetamol will help control that. It also helps with aches and pains. So headache, body ache, everything will feel better. And the suggested dose is one gram for an adult. Then you can take 500 milligram to one gram every six hours. So paracetamol is wonderful. And many times, uh, even in the times before COVID, when I used to see patients, um, sometimes they have chest pain uh, for whatever reason. And they say, oh, paracetamol works, but it doesn't last. And so paracetamol is not meant to last the action. You know, the effect is not meant to last for more than six or eight hours. And the reason is your body, the liver and kidneys will get rid of it within six to eight hours. And which means that all the aches and pains will start again in six to eight hours. And so that's why you do need to top it up every six hours. Plenty of fluids to drink, very, very important because on top of the, if, especially if people are getting fever, they will lose a lot of uh, water through uh, sweating and just by the body being so hot. And if you don't drink enough water, then that's just going to make you feel even more tired, dehydrated, that will make the headaches worse and that can affect the kidneys. Rest, sleep, relax as long as you need to listen to your body. Now, next one. So none of these treatments actually, as I said, they don't um, actually get rid of the virus. Also, there isn't a lot of evidence. So none of these are actually, yeah, they are not going to get rid of the virus. There is no evidence that the vitamins work, but vitamin D3, so vitamin D, it's, we know that um, it actually helps the immune system within the lungs to clear different um, infectious germs. And so there is an association of lack of vitamin D with people getting TB in the lungs. And so again, the suggestion that people take vitamin D, it's based on that. We don't have any evidence because it's a new disease. So you know, we don't the, the, all this has not been scientifically proven. Taking vitamin D will certainly not do any harm. Uh, Public Health England have said the other day that um, uh, this COVID uh, pandemic has come soon after the winter. In this country, most of us actually, because the winters are so harsh and we barely see the sun out, um, certainly in Manchester, all of us run low levels of vitamin D by now, by this time of the year. And so taking vitamin D supplements is not a bad idea. Um, it will also probably help with the body aches, muscle pains. Vitamin C, again, a lot of people have suggested that it boosts body's immunity. Um, fresh fruit and vegetables. So the vitamins, fresh food, we should be doing even otherwise, even without getting um, a COVID infection. I did this talk for another group last week and people asked me questions about warm water goggles, steam inhalation, etc. And so again, I said there that it will not do anything to the virus. But if someone has got sore throat, then all these things will certainly soothe the throat, which means that then you can drink uh, plenty of liquids you can eat without actually feeling too unwell with it. And that's all going to help recover from the infection. Can I have the next one, please? Thank you. Yeah. So how long does complete recovery take? So most of us are quite active. Most of us are like very fit and active. And it's going to take 
three to four weeks before we can start all our previous activities. So in the best case scenario, and in 90% people, they will start feeling better after one week, and then the tiredness and body aches will again subside slowly in the second week. But that doesn't mean you can start doing everything else you were doing, uh, 12 hour working days and everything. Uh, that, that, that's going to take some more time. So I, I have been advising to some of the medical and nursing colleagues and because most of us are still working, we are not working from home, we are actually going there to work. And it, it is taking people three to four weeks before they feel completely back to normal. And our um, occupational health department also says that most of the people are needing two weeks, three weeks before they can start gradually working. Now, over this period, we have to start getting active gradually. If we just sit in the bed for three weeks, then fourth week is going to be difficult and so on. And so this advice about getting active gradually is based on our normal experience with any pneumonia, other pneumonias. And so what I would suggest is even in the first week, as soon as the fever has subsided and you can actually sit in the bed, you can do something. Uh, for the se first seven days, you are still going to be isolating. So you're not going to be able to leave the room and go and do anything. But even being confined to your room, one can do pranayam, one can do yoga. That will certainly help with all the aches and pains. Um, a lot of my friends have said, my, well, a lot of my colleagues and friends who had the COVID infection said that they started walking in the garden. Uh, uh, as soon as they came out of the room in seven days, they were walking in their garden. Then slowly walks around the house, building up very, very gradually. Um, and that has helped them. Um, and of course, be positive, keep calm and stay connected. So you have already had two um, uh, webinars about how to uh, keep how, how to be positive and how to keep calm. Stay connected with all your friends, family members, and then of course, the INSA group and the Shaka group. These are our families here in this country. So um, I think that was the last slide. Is that right, um, Amitji? I think I'm done. So thank you for listening and I will take questions now. Yeah, that was the last slide. Uh, Nilaji, I will hand over to Manuji. Thank you. Thank you, Nilaji. This was a very, very enlightening talk. And uh, I mean, everybody was, I think at least I was hanging on to every word you were saying. Uh, it's been very helpful. I will uh, come to the questions quickly. Um, the first one is, the first one from Kamal Raoniarji is that can microwaving face masks kill coronavirus on them? He's asking this because on one hand, they say we have shortage of face masks. And on the other hand, they say it should be thrown after a few hours uh, of use. So probably the question is, can it be reused and can it be microwave to kill the virus? So which face mask are we talking about? He hasn't specified that. I'm guessing the one that people are wearing uh, when they are stepping out to buy grocery, etc. Okay, okay. So actually, you know, the, what the face mask does. So if you are using face masks when you step out, you know, I mean, in um, UK, the public health have not. And I think even the WHO are hesitating to advise it. That's because they worry that everybody will start using the medical mask and then that will cause shortage in the hospitals. So if you are just going out and you want to wear a mask to protect yourself and protect others, just a simple um, cloth mask is good enough. Um, or a simple kind of cotton scarf, uh, two, three layers of it on the face uh, should do the job. And then you can, the best virus is of course, soap and water. So when you come home, you can wash them with your scarf. Or if you have a um, cloth mask, you can just simply wash it. Okay. 
The next question is from Ira, and she says, "Namaste, doctor. Uh, thank you so much for taking time out and sharing your insights about COVID-19. My question is: When you say airborne, does it transmit only in a confined space through aerosols, or even in open air?" Yeah. Okay, that's a good question. And so, aerosol is essentially what aerosol means is a very, very tiny particle that we can't see. and uh, because it's tiny it can just float in the air for example so it is thought that when people are coughing people with covid infection are coughing they are not necessarily generating an aerosol what they generate is droplets which is tiny drops that we can actually see with our eyes and those droplets are bigger they are more than Uh, in size, uh, even some of them are millimeter size. We can see them, and they will settle, so that they, they won't float in the air for a long time. They will just go down, and so they will fall near where the uh, person is staying. And uh, the other one was open air, wasn't it? Um, so again yeah in open air uh, so whether you are in confined space or open air an infected person coughing will cause all these droplets to spread so aerosols are only generated by certain procedures so when uh, for example uh, some uh, a person infected person is having some procedure done in their throat or nose or in the hospital if they are put on certain kind of treatments um ventilators then that will generate generates the aerosols okay uh, thank you uh, dr neela the other question is can shower area spread infection to other family members and does sleeping on abdomen rather than the back help in improving the breathlessness when somebody has the disease okay yeah so shower areas potentially could spread infections couldn't they because you know again if we are uh, if more than one person is in the shower then yes because the infected person will of course um, touch the taps and everything uh, but then soap and water are the best agents to kill this virus and so if we are sharing it's important to make sure that after showering we just wash everything with uh, soap and water the other question was about lying on the uh, tummy and yes um, when people get breathless um, the, the, one one thing that has been shown to help is lying on the tummy uh, changing posture frequently particularly lying on the tummy and the reason is most of us tend to lie on the back and then if we are spending many hours in the bed uh, the bottoms of the lung the lung bases actually don't move as well as they should and those areas of lungs are actually very important in getting the oxygen so if we lie um prone it is called so tummy down face down then actually those areas uh, kind of under our shoulder blades will expand better um also if there is some mucus in those areas of the lungs that will drain um, better so it is it is advantages if uh, one is feeling breathless one should certainly try and lie on the tummy um thank you uh, the other question is any specific cleaning measures that need to be considered with fruits and groceries and i will couple it with another one how long virus remains in plastic and cloth surface okay so uh, virus remains on plastic for uh, several hours people have said even one or two days and uh, whereas on the cloth it won't stay for that long so only a few hours um any any kind of yeah uh, any uh, material especially cotton uh, material um groceries should we wash them before getting in yes uh, as much as we can yes and again soap and water are the best things for that so um this question uh, dr neela this 
parents, even I have this question because the earlier they said we're not getting COVID-19 and now we are hearing more about children getting it. So I think any mother would think about this. And uh, there is a question that uh, will, get, will, get, um, will kids get infected with COVID-19? Will kids get infected? Yes, will the children get it? Because earlier they said they wouldn't and now things, you know, we hear, we hear different, uh, we hear the children are getting infected. So is there, has there been a change? So, um, yes, you are right that, you know, initially it was suggested that children were not getting infected. And I think uh, this is again probably two months ago. In Korea, they did some uh, testing. They tested, they just um, did some kind of sample surveys with throats. And they did not find uh, many children infected at all. But then more recently, this we have read some reports of children getting infected. Um, now, obviously, you know, the virus can sometimes change. And of course, how it will affect different populations depends on um, other conditions, living conditions, etc. So uh, it has been suggested, yes, that it can infect children. But again, compared to so many adults, uh, there are only a few reports in there. It is possible that children are getting infections without symptoms. We don't, we, we really don't know that. Uh, really. Okay. Thank you. Um, this, these two questions are related to treatment. So uh, can we use any dry cough syrup? And do you recommend vitamin C, uh, which you get over the counter, any vitamin C tablet or only dietary supplements like oranges, lemons, etc.? Are they enough? Okay, so um, uh, dietary supplements are fine. And, you know, I mean, uh, over the counter vitamin C tablets are fine as well. Yes, doesn't have to be any particular uh, brand. Um, for prevention, certainly, I think good diet is good enough. Um, as I said earlier, there is no evidence that taking vitamin C will get you better any sooner or anything. Um, but and what about dry cough syrup? That, yeah, and dry cough syrup, uh, yes. Again, uh, the, you know, the, the, it, it's... Um, it, it helps control the cough. And so, you know, by kind of uh, making the cough less frequent, it can help you sleep better, say, for example, or uh, most of the people will experience, will be experiencing a lot of muscle pain. And then if you're coughing on top of that, it can just hurt more. So yes, if there is a lot of cough, dry cough syrup will help feel better. Yeah. Uh, last question, Dr. Neelaji. Apart from pranayam, do you suggest any breathing exercise to do to keep the lungs healthy? Anything which will help to make the lungs strong enough so that when someone uh, gets COVID-19, they can cope better? Okay. So, yes, again, generally, if people are fit, so any exercise is good for the lungs. So if you are regularly kind of jogging, gym, doing cardio, swimming anything um, that, that 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 will that person will generally have good lung capacity and in our practice we see you know quite commonly that um, if when we do breathing tests lung function tests people who are fit often have very good lung function and of course um, they will not feel breathless very easily with any infection uh, any pneumonia or covid uh, and what other breathing exercises apart from pranayam? Uh, anything really. Any exercise is good. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Neela. I will uh, hand over uh, to Virendra Ji, who will give the vote of thanks. Thank you. Hi, Namaskar, Neela Ji. Uh, thank you very much for sparing some time for us. We know that being a frontline worker, how busy you are at this moment of time, this, during this period, this was very much needed. Everyone had the question in their mind, what it is, how, how, what are symptoms, what are the possible treatments, how we can be away from it, you know. Thanks for giving some of those tips and tricks as well. I'd like to thank INSA and FISI UK for looking out for 
everyone and providing this support system for those who needs it most and i would like to thank everyone for joining today this webinar hope you found it useful we are looking forward to seeing your next webinar as well in meantime as nila ji mentioned be positive stay home and be safe thanks everyone bye thanks everyone this call will now be ended thanks for attending the session thank you thank you